Uh, this is uh, Thomas Cook of Blue Indiana here, and we are going to be talking with congressional candidate uh, Dr. Woody Myers today about his candidacy uh, and his platform and uh, what he's trying to bring to the campaign here in uh, the 7th District. So, Dr. Woody Myers, first of all, thank you for sitting down with us today and talking about uh, some of the issues in your campaign. Thank you for asking. All right. Um, well, we'll just we'll start with some of the, the big issues that are facing the 7th District. Um, obviously, the war in Iraq is one of the most pressing issues on a national level, a state level, and a local level. Uh, would you like to talk about your stance on that conflict? Well, I, I would be happy to, but let's put it in context because the war of Iraq really affects us uh, in, in, in many ways. It's not just the loss of life. I think we're up to, unfortunately, over 4,024 young men and women who have uh, been killed, uh, U.S. citizens, not counting the citizens of other countries. And I think well over 60,000 of our, of our soldiers have been uh, wounded, soldiers, sailors, and, and, and airmen have been wounded. Um, uh, it's not just the cost in lives, it's not just the cost in treasure. Uh, we are now spending in the neighborhood of 10 to 12 billion dollars a month in Iraq, and then depending on how you do the math, it can be four or five thousand bucks a second. Uh, so that's uh, an incredible amount, it's, and it certainly is pertinent to the Seventh District because if you if you look at how much we've spent on the war so far, uh, over seven hundred and seventy million dollars has come just from the Seventh Congressional District. So it's cost us a great deal of money. Think of what we could have done in the Seventh District with that kind of money over the last five years. And by the way, the war has lasted longer now than World War One. World War II and Vietnam. And I dare say we haven't gotten what we needed to get out of this uh, out of this war. We should have never been there in the first place. And no matter what we hear some of the proponents say, it is time for us to come home. It is time for us to give the Joint Chiefs of Staff a different set of orders to tell them, bring our troops home as quickly and as safely as possible. No, we don't set a deadline that we announce to the world. No, we don't point to this division or that one saying they're coming home first, second, and third. But we do come home, and we have our State Department tell the Iraqi government, it is time for you to take over. You know, it's very naive for us here in the United States, and, 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 and wrong for us to think that we are going to go to Iraq and settle a fight between Sunni and Shia that has lasted thousands of years. It is not going to happen. We, the United States people, aren't going to fix that fight. It's time for the Iraqi people the Iraqi government to step up and fix it themselves. And it's time for us to step back and bring our troops and the money that we're spending on them home to take care of the problems here in the 7th District, which include health care, jobs, and education. And I maintain that those are the big three for us. Uh, we have absolutely got to do a better job in health care. We have the best health care system in the world, yet we don't have everybody having equal access to it. We've got to have universal access to this great system that we have available to some. We've got to improve public health for prevention purposes. We've got to improve the number of doctors and nurses that are available to take care of the elderly. Uh, we are now in the baby boom era. The baby boomers are, are starting to get the kinds of problems that need attention. So we've got to improve in the number of uh, people that are available uh, to take care of, of, of the, uh, the citizens. And we've got to become more efficient as well. We've got uh, a system that is still way too paper and pencil. It's got to become electronic. I like to talk about the fact, unfortunately, that in my family, the only folks with electronic medical records are the dog and the cat, they, because the, the veterinarians have figured it out. Well, why can't we figure it out for people as well? And so that's what we've got to do. Those are some of the things we've got to do in healthcare. We've got to change the way we deal with our insurance companies and pharmaceutical companies as well. But the, 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 the healthcare issue is, is, is a big one, and that's one that I'm prepared to tackle. But they're very connected. Healthcare is very connected to jobs and to, and to education. The people with the best health care plans are the people with the best jobs. Uh, we've got to improve the number of jobs, high quality, high paying jobs here in uh, the 7th District. You know, some of the counties surrounding us, Boone County, Hendricks County, for instance, they've had some success in attracting large new companies. Well, we need the same kind of success here in Marion County as well. And that will take a collaborative effort between the, uh, the city government, the state government, and the federal government. And I certainly want the feds to do their share in making this making this uh, much more likely that we get those kinds of uh, companies here. And then finally, education. Those that have the best education get the best jobs. Um, and we have serious issues, of course, with education. We've got to fix No Child Left Behind, improve our graduation rates here in Indianapolis high schools, 
uh, d d depending on how you count, it could be 40%, 50%, 60%. I don't get into that argument because none of those numbers are acceptable. The only acceptable number, I think, is 100% for high school graduation. So we've got to really change the way we approach education. We've got to help our IPS school superintendent, Gene White, in his job. You know, he's fighting a $20 million budget cut today instead of us giving him the money he needs. So we've got to change that dynamic. And we've also got to get parents much more involved in the schools than they've been before. Because if you don't have a good a foundation at home, the schools can't do it all. So education, jobs, health care, those are the things that are most important to the people of this district. And those are the things that I want to work on uh, in Congress. Obviously, just uh, from an outside observer's perspective, uh, watching this race, a big part of, of your campaign seems to be touting your experience and sort of the, the wealth of knowledge that you bring right. through some of your previous job experience. Do you want to kind of talk about how you sure. think that you're uniquely situated to address some of these Well, questions? I have had some terrific experiences uh, outside of Indiana and inside of Indiana. I was uh, fortunate enough to, to, uh, to, to have uh, my education take place here in, in the city for our elementary school and high school on the west coast to, for medical school and for business school, or for uh, undergraduate and for business school on the east coast for medical school. So I've been all over the country from an educational uh, standpoint and I understand that uh, that education is extremely important. I think it's terrific that, that a guy like me was able to come up from the east side of Indianapolis and to achieve the kind of educational opportunity that, that I was able to achieve and it was only because uh, of the civil rights movement that a guy who looks like me could have had those kinds of opportunities. I'm very much aware of that and I'm very much in the mode of now giving back and helping to make sure that other people get those same kinds of, of opportunities. Um, I have uh, worked in a variety of terrific jobs where I've had the opportunity to, to see health care, for instance, in, in a variety of perspectives. I've, I've worked as a member of an academic medical center in a big uh, hospital setting. I've worked uh, in clinics, I have taken care of patients in the emergency room and in Indianapolis at Wishart Hospital. I was an attending physician and on Fridays and Saturdays on, on, uh, uh, in the, in the Wishart ER when I was state health commissioner, which is uh, one of the other jobs I've had, and, and when I was the corporate medical director of Anthem, which was at that time Blue Cross Blue Shield of Indiana. So I have had a variety of jobs in very senior positions administratively. I've managed budgets, I've managed people, I've managed major negotiations, I've participated in a number of mergers and acquisitions. I understand how government works, I understand how business works, I understand how they work together, and I understand how they oppose each other as well. And I believe, therefore, with those sets of, that set of experiences, I have the skill, the ability to negotiate the kinds of deals that we need to make in Congress to change the status quo. You know, one of the great jobs I had was that of being the senior uh, medical official, chief medical officer, so to speak, at Ford Motor Company. At that time, Ford was doing very well, and we had plants in 38 countries around the world. And I was uh, op had the opportunity to visit 20 of them while I was uh, while I was at the the company. And I tell you what, I wouldn't trade our healthcare system in the U.S. for any of those other 20 countries. But we have a lot to learn from them, and we have a lot that we can do to improve what we have here. So those are the experiences that I bring to this job. I don't come with any particular industry or individual pointing, telling me what to do. I'm not being manipulated. I can't be manipulated. I don't know how anybody could ever do that with me. I've been independent uh, my whole life. I don't need anybody's uh, resources to, uh, to get things done and to do what I need to get done. So I am very happy to say that I can't be bought uh, and I will do the absolute best job I can for the citizens of this district because this is home. This is where I was born and raised.